This is CNN. Donald Sterling may be keeping silent about his plans for the L.A. Clippers, but his wife is talking about the team. Co-owner Shelly Sterling says she supports the NBA's move to ban her husband and to look for a new CEO. Hmm. CNN's Ted Rollins is in Los Angeles. What does that mean exactly, Ted? I don't know, Carol. Kind of looks like she's distancing herself from Donald Sterling and maybe wanting to keep the team for herself. The bottom line is the Clippers are enjoying the best season they have had in franchise history, and it now looks that both Mr. and possibly Mrs. Sterling would like to try to keep the team. With a win this weekend, the Los Angeles Clippers are moving on to the next round of the NBA playoffs. Meanwhile, off the court, the drama surrounding team owner Donald Sterling continues to grow. In an interview with ABC's Barbara Walters, V. Stiviano, the woman heard with Sterling on the now infamous recordings, defended the Clippers' owner and claimed she's still close with him. Is Donald Sterling a racist? No. I don't believe it in my heart. What is his state of mind right now? Confused. I think he feels very alone. Meanwhile, Sterling's wife, Shelley, who was at this weekend's game, says she thinks the NBA's plan to hire an executive to run the team is a great idea, releasing a statement that seems to indicate she'd like to hold on to the Clippers, which is part of a family trust. The statement says in part, as a co-owner, I am fully committed to taking the necessary steps to make the Clippers the best team in the NBA. That has been my aspiration ever since 1981. She's saying essentially that you can do what you want to my husband. Uh, he is a racist, maybe. Uh, you can strip him of his control as the Board of Governor. But this is a piece of family property, and you can't just take away our property. We didn't do anything. We didn't say anything. This is not us. As for Donald Sterling's next move, it's still unclear if he'll be willing to sell. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti on CBS's Face the Nation says after speaking to Sterling, he doesn't think he'll go down without a fight. I, I think that he, he thinks that he's going to be the owner for, for a long time, uh, he, that he wants to stay the owner. And I said this will be a long, protracted fight and a painful thing for a city that is a great city, a great American city. Now, the bottom line, Carol, anybody uh, who looks at this doesn't really see an option for the, either one of the Sterlings to own this team if the NBA owners move forward with their plan and vote to have them sell it. That 10-member committee that met last week is expected to meet again this week to move that process along. Ted Rowlands reporting live for us this morning. Let's talk more about this, uh, this notion that Shelley Sterling might one day own the team. I want to bring in Michael McCann. He's a legal analyst and writer for Sports Illustrated and SI.com. Welcome. Hi, Carol. Good morning. Good morning. I I'm glad you're here. So Shelley Sterling at Game 7, she was shaking hands. She's releasing statements. It does sound like the Sterling Sterlings have a plan to keep the team. What does it sound like to you? Well, it sounds like there could be two different legal strategies that complement each other. One would be the legal strategy that we talked about last week with Donald Sterling, that he could file a lawsuit, that he could seek an injunction. There are different recourses that he has to turn to. Now the other is the possibility that Shelley Sterling could seek her own legal action to block the NBA. She could argue that it's, part, it's a family trust, that removing one family member from the Clippers doesn't remove the entity, the family, and as a result, she would then take the team. It would revert to her if Donald is removed. So we could see, possibly, two separate lawsuits against the NBA by different members of the Sterling family. So, so has Shelley Sterling been involved in the Clippers at all, and does it matter? It doesn't necessarily matter. Her involvement has reportedly been limited, but if she has equity in the team, and if the trust is configured in a way that removing one family member reverts the rest of the trust to the remainder of the family, then whether or not she's active or passive won't dictate her equity in the team. And she will argue that her lack of involvement, perhaps over the years, was just because she was more of a passive owner. But that doesn't mean she wasn't an owner. Interesting. So, so in, in Ted's package, his piece, he said Cher Shelley Sterling released this statement, and in that statement, she welcomes the commissioner's search for a CEO who promotes equality and inclusiveness. 
Now, it's clear the NBA does not want her input, but can it keep her out of this in the long term? Can it say, uh, Mrs. Sterling, we think you should stop releasing statements? Well, Adam Silver said at his press conference, the NBA commissioner, that any action that the league has taken is against her husband, Donald Sterling. It doesn't appear as if Shelly Sterling is the target of any league action, so given that comment, it would seem that the league cannot take any action against her. She appears to be exercising her rights as a co-owner of the team. There's no clear reason why she cannot do so. Now, granted, her past in terms of racism and her husband, she's implicated as well, but again, the NBA didn't do anything about it for years. So it's hard for the league to now argue, well, years ago you were implicated, we didn't do anything, but now it counts against you. Michael McCann, thanks for your insight. I appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up in the newsroom, too.